Well, welcome back. Welcome back to the Extraordinary Drummer Show. As you know, I'm your host, Sharon Moore. <laughs> we help you welcome drummer from Tower Power, David Garibaldi. Hey, David. Sharon, pleasure to be here, man. Always, you know. Yeah, Thanks man. for having welcome me again. Back. You know, I was asking you, um, what's it like being back on the road? Did you find that the band had to get in sync? Or were you guys ready? Or is it, is, is it a stamina thing? What's, what's going on with getting back to work? Well, you know, it's kind of like riding a bike. You know, when we, we started up again, really, I mean, things came back really, really quick. We did some rehearsing, had dedicated rehearsals. Um, things just kind of fell in, you know. We've done it so much, and we know each other so well. You know, we have a system, and we love doing what we do, so we just kind of put it back to work, you know. The, we, the, the, the time we were off was the longest we'd been off ever. And so it was, it was strange, you know, but we made it through and, uh, you know, here we are, we're still still doing it. Let's do some rapid fire. This is going to be fun. (laughs) I get to do rapid fire with Carol Paul to go, man. Okay. Let's see if I can respond in a rapid fire way. Go. (laughs) I, I should have my glasses on. Favorite junk food. Favorite junk food? Well, I don't know if it's junk. It's chocolate. <laughs> Come on, man. If you could have a unlimited supply of anything, what would it be? You say an unlimited supply? Right. Uh, I would say kindness. Oh, yeah. Don't you think it, we need a little bit of that these days? Yeah, for some reason, I thought you might say money. <laughs> No, I got, I got that. You know, I'm, I'm cool with that. It's I, the other part that when you leave your house and you're interacting with people, that's the part that, you know, I think is pretty important, yeah. you know. Right there. Here's another one. If you didn't go to that James Brown uh, sound check slash rehearsal, how would your playing drums be affected today? Oh, man, I don't know, you know, because that kind of – I, I can't even answer that. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be talking to you probably, you know, I'd be talking to somebody else. I, you know, I, I really don't, <clears throat> I don't know. That was such a, a huge moment, you know, like kind of like that was where the heavens in a way kind of opened up for me. You know, I saw kind of what I wanted to be and what I wanted to become. And then I just went with that. I just followed that inspiration, you know. Scale of one to ten, how good are you at keeping secrets? Well, I'm pretty damn good. <laughs> okay, here's one. I've got maybe another three or four. It says, what does a person need to be happy? Well, it starts with you. You know, it's, you know and I think happiness is a choice. You decide that you're going to be happy, you decide you're going to be grateful, you decide you're going to be kind, you know, all the things that are within your control. I can't control anything outside of me, but I can control how I am. And so I can choose to be happy, I can choose to be sad, I can choose to be angry, you know. You just choose happiness, man. You choose, choose what you want, you know. Make your life your way you like it to be. What's for dinner tonight? Oh, I don't know, because we're in the studio. Oh. So we're, we're recording, so maybe food will be brought in or something. You know, I don't know, man. I'm not going to be home where I can get mama's cooking. I'm not going to be able to do that, <laughs> you know, which I miss. My wife is such a good cook, you know. Uh, mm. I have no idea what it will be, but I'll, I'll make a healthy choice. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Okay, just a, just a couple more. I love these because the fan says we want to we want to get to know the drummer, and that's what my show was really all about. It's not as much oh, about okay. as it is about humanizing the guys. It says that's here, what makes it extraordinary. Ah, thank you, man. And you know, people tell me it feels more like a hang than to do an interview. Here's one: Do you prefer match grip or traditional grip? Okay, so I started with traditional grip. And I did that for many, many, many years. And 
the early years with Tower of Power, early records with Tower of Power, back to Oakland. That was all like match grip, uh, the early stuff, right? And then uh, I was studying with a guy in the Bay Area named Chuck Brown in Oakland. And I started adding more drums. This is during the time that I was studying with him. And I had really developed the, the match grip, or excuse me, uh, a traditional grip, you know, really, really to a pretty high degree. And so I started adding more drums. And I decided that because I was adding more drums, that the match grip would be a better choice for that, for the evolution of my drum set, that then this would be the evolution of my grip. So I told my teacher, Chuck, you know, that I had made this decision. And man, he did not like that at all. <laughs> he was very old school, very traditional, you know, in the way that he thought of it. You know, he thought I was making a big, big mistake. Um, so for a long time, I did not play any traditional grip. I just went exclusively to match grip. I studied in when I lived in LA, I studied with Murray Spivak and, you know, really got that, you know, pretty together and then sort of drifted back to, you know, the traditional grip. And every once in a while, I, you know, I use it, but I would say predominantly now the, the grip that I use is, is matched grip. But I think that the traditional grip, there's a certain sensitivity that you get with the way that that left hand position is, you know, that I th just think that it, you, you get it kind of a, a way that you can articulate figures inside of a groove a little differently than you can with uh, the match grip. Okay. Favorite method book. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to say stick control. And the reason is, is because uh, um, I've had it ever since I was a teenager and then had the privilege of going through it cover to cover with Murray Spivak. And it was uh, going through that book the way that we did was kind of like a milestone, really. I look at it as like a milestone in my music life. I had never done anything like that before. And it built some things into my thinking and into my, uh, my hand technique, my hand approach that I couldn't have got otherwise. And I, I, we did stick control with Chuck Brown, but with Murray, we went through the entire book and he had a system and it was just fantastic, you know? So stick control, I still use it. I go through it still. Uh, I do random pages out of it, you know, every week. You know, not every day. Sometimes I'll do every day if I feel like it. But I'm, it's a staple kind of in my, my uh, technique, um, you know, training, you know, and maintenance. Last four. Cake or pie? What? <laughs> Cake or pie? See, now you ask the questions, man. <laughs> that's not even fair the reason i think about it is because my mom used to bake and she could re she was a really really excellent baker and so she'd bake these incredible chocolate cakes and then her and my aunt were masters at apple pie so those two things man i'm sorry if it's good <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Here's, a, here's the only political one that I have the last two. Roe versus Wade. Well, I think a woman should have a right to choose. Mm. I think that that's a, a basic tenet of life is the right to choose. Whatever you're going to choose, with cho you know, just choice, right? That's me. Here's one. PC or Mac? Oh, Mac. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Who inspires you? Uh, you. Uh, people that are, you know, pursuing kind of their passion. People that do it. You know, um, I like excellence. 
um, persistence. I admire that in people. Um, I would say that that is clearly one of the biggest, the biggest things, you know, is uh, all my, my friends are really accomplished people and they do it because they're persistent. You know, they know what they are, they know what they want, and then they are just persistent in making it happen. You know, the, what's that saying? A genius is persistence in disguise. That's loaded, man. So, you know, we look at all these people in the world who do all this really cool stuff. And sometimes the thinking is, well, where is there room for me? You know, how, I, how could I do something like that? You know, well, you could. You could do something just as cool and have it be your own, you know. Be yourself. Put your reps in. Stay with it. Do it till the grave. David, I thank you so very much for sticking your head in and coming back on the show, man. You're a beautiful man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.